Today we're going to be talking about how to clean your mechanical keyboards. Uh, first thing we're going to cover is the tools that you're going to need for the process. On the left here you could see uh, the first type of keycap pullers that we'll be covering. They use uh, two little metal wires to slip around the cap and to lift it up off of your board. And then to the right you could see the other kind of keycap puller that's the most common is this plastic kind which uses two legs to slip around the keycap and to pull it up off your board. We don't necessarily recommend this kind because the sharp edges on the plastic can actually scratch your keycaps uh, if they're particularly soft. And then to the right here you can see key switch pullers. Uh, these are only useful if you have a board with hot swap sockets which allows you to change the switches in it without having to solder and desolder them. Um, these work by slipping below the switch and depressing the little clips that hold it into your keyboard's mounting plate. Uh, this one here is coated so that if you have a mounting plate that's shiny it doesn't risk scratching it. Uh, next, we'll be talking about what tools you'll need to actually do the dusting once you get your keycaps or key switches off. Next up, we've got the tools that you're going to be using to do the actual dusting for your keyboard. Uh, first, we've got just some clean paint brushes. Uh, chances are, if you don't already have these around your house, that you can grab one for a dollar or less. Uh, just make sure that whatever you buy isn't too soft or too hard. That way, you don't risk either not getting rid of the dust or scratching your keyboard. Uh, next up, we've got the standard office supply can of compressed air. Um, if you don't already have one of these, you could probably buy one for between $5 to $15, depending on the size you want to grab. Uh, they're the most common way everyone uses to clean their keyboards, and it's both safe for your electronics and something that you can readily get if you don't already have one. Uh, next up, we've got a mini vac. Uh, this can actually uh, vacuum or blow air out of it. Uh, the problem with these is that they're generally not super powerful, so a lot of the times they can leave dust behind. Um, this one is around $25 when I bought it years ago. Uh, now they retail for anywhere between that to $40. But as I said, generally not very powerful and probably not recommended. Uh, lastly, we've got the most expensive option, which is the DataVac electric duster. Uh, this is kind of the nuclear option for cleaning your keyboard because this is way, way more powerful than any can of compressed air you've ever used. Uh, it won't damage your electronics despite that, but it does retail for around $100, so you need to be pretty serious about this as a hobby if you're going to invest in this. Uh, next up, we'll actually show you how to clean the keyboards. Now we're going to cover how to handle the actual dusting of your mechanical keyboards. Uh, first thing that you're going to want to do is to remove keycaps. Uh, here we've got an older model Ducky 10 keyless keyboard and a newer drop all keyboard. Now this one has recessed switches and this one has exposed switches. So you can see how it, uh, how it needs to be done on each kind of board. Uh, we'll start with the ducky. And what you wanna do is get your keycap puller. This is the kind that uses two wires. This one, you'll wanna slide down around the sides and then kind of pivot it so that it goes around the corner of the cap. Once you do that, you can lift gently, wriggle it a little if it won't come off immediately and then it'll pop out. Same thing on the alt. Slide it around the sides, pivot it to the corners, lift, and it should pop off. Now the good thing about this is with the longer keys, you can slide it around one corner and then work it over to the other corner and it will lift the whole key at once. Now if you wanna use the plastic kind of keycap puller, the way those work is they go down over the key, you hear a click when it seats into place, and then you can just lift and it comes off. Problem with these is they could be a bit problematic because of the thicker legs sliding into boards with recess switches where the edge could interfere like you'll probably see here. So it only clicked in on one side and if I try to lift, no good. That and the fact that they could scratch your keys are the reasons why we don't generally recommend using this type. Now what you're going to want to do next is remove your key switches if you want to deep clean. Now this, to be clear, is not always necessary. Most uh, boards, the switches are so tight that dust doesn't really get into the board. But if you really do want to do that, what you're going to want to do is grab your key switch puller. You see the two tongues here. You want to go top and bottom on your switch. Make sure it's seated into the little indentations there. Squeeze tightly and then just lift and it should come out. As you can see, eventually things will get in, but this board hasn't been cleaned in probably years, so it takes a while. Now, if you don't want to do that, or if your board doesn't have hot swap switches, you don't need to worry about it. One word of caution, when you're putting your switches back in, make sure that the pins are correctly aligned, because if they're not, you're going to bend them. And if you bend them, that's a problem. Just seat it correctly, and then it should click back into place, and you could replace the keycap. Now, what we're going to do next 
is remove all the caps from this board so that we can show you the dusting process, but we're going to fast forward a little because that's not the most exciting thing in the world. We'll be right back. Five minutes later and we've got all the keycaps off. Uh, now, as promised, what's underneath is pretty gross. Uh, you've got months, if not years, of pet hair, crumbs, dead skin, and whatever else may have fallen into the keyboard. Uh, now, for this next part of the process, I would actually recommend not doing it at your desk because you're going to be spreading around the dust and debris that you have in your keyboard, and you probably don't want that ground into your mouse pad or on your desktop at all. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is choose whichever tool that you'd like to handle the dusting with, and I'm going to demonstrate those one at a time. Uh, first up is the paintbrushes. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones. All you need to do with this, pretty obvious, go between your switches, start brushing out the dirt and debris. As you can see, it does a pretty good job. To get through to most of it, you just have to be careful to get into the sides of all the switches and make sure you get down to all the little bits of dust that you want to get rid of. And you can kind of go from one side to the other and brush them off the edge. And you can see that's what came out. If you have a large paintbrush, it could actually still work. But what you're going to want to do is make sure that you go in lines. Take a little more time. I'd recommend probably using a smaller paintbrush, but if this is what you've got, it will work eventually. Now, more commonly, probably what you've uh, got around for keyboard cleaning is one of these, the cans of compressed air. Uh, the way this works is you just point it where you want to get rid of your dust, squeeze trigger. And blow the dust out. Obviously, you can use a little bit of help in spots. Not the most powerful thing in the world, but it will work unless your keyboard's extremely filthy. Or if you just have things that are uh, stuck in place, what you could do is grab a tweezer something similar, and pluck them out yourself. And that'll get rid of whatever the duster does. It. Lastly, we've got what I call the nuclear option. And to be uh, fair, it's going to be loud. So fair warning. And this will dust out probably the rest of the entire keyboard in less time than uh, both of the other two took to clean their section. So here we go. <laughs> As you can see, aside from a couple of stubborn pieces that were stuck in the switches, that got rid of pretty much everything. Uh, now, the last thing you may want to do is go through the rest of the keyboard with a dry cloth to get rid of any smudges that uh, remain in between switches. Or you could use a very lightly damp one if something's more stubborn. And once you've done that, the last step will just be replacing your keycaps. If you pulled your switches out, obviously you're going to need to replace those as well. And once that's done, you're done.